Oh, this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> Got it. We don't want to leave. Cool. Okay, so uh, here we are. This is our first, uh, I guess, maybe a podcast, maybe something else. We'll kind of see where it goes uh, with with Ivra. Maybe uh, we'll have to think of a name. Maybe an evening with Ivra. Uh, Manuel's got his got his beer over there, so it's a, it's a relaxing evening. Uh, but we'll think of something. Um, and today is kind of like it's an, it's experimental, so. You know, we're gonna we're gonna kind of just see where the conversation goes. But the big thing is we want to start to you know introduce the community and and the teams uh, and you know us to to everybody else and kind of like understand you know who are you like how do you get into sim racing what do you do uh, and I'm I'm sure that like other people are interested in hearing about that even if it's something they have on their background just as noise. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll kind of see how it goes and. Uh, you know, move on from there. But today is our, our first one. Uh, we've got Manuel from uh, Team RSO with us, uh, who's he's been around for a while now. It's uh, I guess second full season, right? You guys started last year, did very well in the uh, down P2 class, had some tough races, but you know, for the most part, went very very well. Um, so you know, welcome as as our inaugural uh, guest here, um, and. You know, we'll get into the sim stuff afterwards. Uh, but you know, first we'll we'll kind of pick up maybe where we left off. We we had been talking about uh, Manuel, and uh, you know, he's in Switzerland and he's he's working uh, at, at a university right now, uh, but is going to be coming to Calgary soon for uh, for like an exchange thing with your school. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to get to Toronto at some point uh, as part of that, and we can we can show you around. But uh, I guess where we left off there was. Uh, what were you doing at the at the university there as part of the exchange? Yeah, so first of all, thank you very much, uh, Julian, and whole Ibra community. Hello from my side and our side, I would say. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, not even racing in the series, but also discussing with everyone and uh, now you especially. Um, so yeah, you're right. So I'm uh, Manuel. I come originally um, from Germany, uh, close to Düsseldorf. And uh, I live in Switzerland now in Zurich since six years. And I work here at the ETH of uh, uh, Zurich um, as a lecturer, as a researcher. And I am uh, teaching in the field of environmental planning and spatial planning. And I'm also doing my PhD. And uh, yeah, that's what I do in my professional life. But uh, I, I think the common ground is sim racing. <laughs> yeah. So how long, how far along are you? Because I know that uh, PhDs can be a bit of a slog. How, how long like, I will need the PhD? Think, you mean? In the PhD, like how many, yeah, like you're finishing up, right? How many years total has it been so far? Um, I started last year uh, with my PhD before I was uh, oh. only uh, working as a lecturer. Um, so mm -hmm. I kind of uh, used uh, the special lockdown situation uh, for my yeah. personal move to, to do my PhD. And um, hopefully I will be finishing next year, by the end of next year. So it's a, it's a tough that's program. Fast. Um, that's fast. So I, tr I, I pretend to be fast <laughs> <laughs> also in my real life. And um, yeah, let's see where it goes. But um, you know, the most important thing honestly is uh, that uh, I am very happy and uh, enjoying a privilege of uh, working on and with something each and every day, which is really uh, motivating me where I can see kind of uh, there's many things to be changed in the future um, mm -hmm. in terms of climate change the the built environment the urban environment is uh, very important from the from the demand side in terms of energy for example but also in in terms of the reduction side so you can really reduce a lot of emissions for example or um, all the different traffic topics so how to shift from uh our like life with suvs to to kind of a more public transport oriented or av oriented uh transportation system and things like these are really uh super thrilling to to work on to think about and and that's what i enjoy here so really happy man that is super cool so it's it's really focused on like the infrastructure of cities and just like how to kind of optimize that so that it's just focused on like the renewable path well, I mean, there is there is so many facets. Um, I would say so. I mean, clearly there is kind of the modeling part where you where you where you tr where you try to use all the different tools which we have as humans. And meanwhile, so computers, modeling, software, 
statistics software, uh, we, we, we try to, to think through different scenarios. For example, if, if you have a population growth, like here in Switzerland, um, you, you also have to think about how to grow your city, how to expand it. Do you expand it in area or do you ex expand it in kind of density? So um, over here in Switzerland, there is a, a, a couple of, of natural limitations, be it the Alps themselves, so many rocks and glaciers and ice and um, also forests where you cannot really build, which you, which you have to use differently. But there's also duties of protecting nature, biodiversity, um, in, in our field, we're often speaking about the concept of ecosystem services. So these are services which are provided by the ecosystems. So the nature, for example, if you think of soil, um, it has many functions, ecosystem services to us as humans, be it, for example, um, the capacity of storing water or letting water flow or being um, uh, um, kind of home to little animals, uh, be it food production, stuff like that. So these are the services. And if we build on good quality soil, for example, and we seal the area, well, you lose these services and ultimately mm -hmm. you're losing quality for humans, for us to, to live. And if you kind of expand this thought to global context, for example, in, in, in terms of climate change, um, you really also have to think about how to sustainably develop your cities in a sense that you do not go further as we've already gone. So yeah. kind of use what we have and try to protect what is there and try to um, yeah, re-naturalize or naturalize maybe what we can. That's super cool. And it sounds like it would take like a ton of collaboration, like as you're going through kind of like all the different processes to, to get to that outcome. Well, yeah, I mean, there's also the, the, the legal side of all of this. That's also what I care, for example, for in my lecture. So, for example, in Bachelor, I, I teach um, Introduction to Spatial Planning, which is mostly about all the formal stuff of planning. So, which laws are in act, like how to really use these laws to steer urban development, for example, um, how does it kind of interact between the different spatial levels of national and, and, and municipal level, for example. So things like that is, is also very important because, I mean, if you want to change the system, you first have to learn it and understand it. And mm -hmm. then ultimately you have to find ways or new ways to implement ideas or, or new techniques, technologies, and, and you know, like, like all of these processes go hand in hand. So I would also say that um, working in this field is very interdisciplinary. So clearly there is um, all the technical side, which involves uh, informatics or mathematics. So I do a lot of programming and modeling and, and mapping and cartography stuff. But at the same time, it's also uh, psychology and social sciences because we work with humans. We're working in the environment and in, in, in kind of yeah, you know, like the neighborhoods where the people live. So we also have to talk and let them participate. We, we do processes called participatory planning where we try to, um, um, yeah, structurally um, involve people which live at a place, for example, in designing the future of their place because it's super yeah. important for them to attach where they live, to identify with the place. And place attachment is ultimately very important for place making so really developing a city for yeah you know like a, a, a life worthy healthy um, ideally green environment where where we can kind of I don't know find better ways how to treat nature and ultimately how to treat the planet so yeah that's very cool man very cool and so you know tied up with all that stuff with with all your time spent on that you're doing a lot of other sim racing stuff too so how did, how did RSO kind of come to be? Like how long have you guys been together and how long have you been kind of managing with the team? Well, um, RSO itself is like uh, seven years old, I think. Um, but the story of most of us begins maybe like 10 years back on Gran Turismo 5 with PlayStation. Um, nice. Most of my teammates we met because we uh, were opponents in what was kind of uh, um, kind of like 
a, a German championship on Gran Turismo. So there was like weekly races with uh, uh, fixed setup cars and there was kind of a qualification system. And if you end up in the top split, which was only 15 cars back then, um, you, you would race against the same guys week after week. And then it started with some life events where you had some finals or 24 hour races. And that's where we met physically. And so over the years, we, we kind of uh, became friends because coincidentally, most of them were kind of my age and super, cute, super cool guys, like not, not like the, the stereotype gamer guys. So like, yeah. I, I could really also go deeper into other stuff with them, which is very important to me. So really also build on friendships and personality and stuff like that. And nice. um, at some point, Gran Turismo online scene died due to really like not improving server quality but but decreasing and that was right. kind of the time when some of us switched to this eye racing thing and then at <laughs> some point in maybe like half a year or something one after the other bought the computers and switched to eye racing because anyway that's kind of in the future that will be the place to go because it's the best sim and you know like most competitive and stuff like that so we ended up like like stumbling into eye racing, everyone and having like all these struggles like oh what are these inks why do I get four x if someone hits me and then at some point <laughs> uh, we kind of texted each other and like okay like I I saw you also on eye racing like like how does this work and so on and at some point we thought like okay why are we doing this alone obviously we all have the same troubles and that's when we yeah. kind of teamed up to to well be kind of the start of Rangeport Online. And from there, I think we just grew with the overall development of sim racing. And what is like one of the key components why I would consider our team as, as one of the well known and also com most competitive ones in the service. Um, well, we can be. <laughs> um, <laughs> so is that, I mean, the core was kind of the best sim racers and Gran Turismo at that time. So there was oh, yeah. truly some quality, like for example, Angelo Michel, uh, like who started popping up in Gran Turismo when he was like 11 or something, like super fast, super many errors and uh, becoming the youngest ever sim racing trophy champion at the Nürburgring Expo at the age of 16. So like this was crazy, but this also shows like the potential of our drivers. We have a couple of guys uh, who qualified for this yeah. academy stuff and, and so on. And so we really had a, a, a strong base in the beginning. And also because it was so random how we formed and how we met and who we were. Um, it is also, well, it's a coincidence, but it's ultimately also a, a key feature of our success is that we have so many different talents beside the racing. So right. there was like, guys who were super good in designing stuff and doing all the Photoshop stuff. There is uh, engineers in our team who are helping us with uh, the understanding and development of like all the driving and setup stuff. Um, we have many people who are super talented in, in all the programming side of it. So we also built many tools in the past years and really went into uh, the very analytical part of sim racing, the very technical and very, I would say, professional part of sim racing, because that's where I personally see the future of this sport. And, mm -hmm. and we, we, we built most of our advantages beside the track. And so we grew. And now, as I think since four years, um, we're an officially registered association. So that also we were like some of the first movers in the beginning. But um, we learned very quickly when we formed as a team in iRacing that, that there was some interest from external people coming to us. Like, okay, like, mm. it's super cool what you do. Like, how can we involve? Like, okay, we want to pay you stuff. And, you know, like, in, in, the, in the beginning, like, when there was someone, like, okay, I pay you a thousand euros. I was like, okay, like, um, I can kind of sell this as I did a talk in your company <laughs> and, like, do this privately and then at yeah. some point we kind of transfer it back to the guys and you know like at some point the money starts coming and that was the point where we really thought like, okay no we really have to do this like professionally in the sense of transparent and correct so that's why we really yeah. formed this legal um uh, uh, uh form so yeah and and 
well, like we really, that's what I mean with growing with the sport. So like we didn't plan for, okay, let's become this or let's get the best guys out there. So we do what we do. It's clearly a hobby. Um, but at the end, we try to do it as efficient and as clever as possible. And I would also say we share the fascination for really working on the details. And that's also why we enjoy it a lot for uh, like to, to, to prepare, for example, for the races. That's, I mean, personally, my personal opinion on that is I enjoy it even more sometimes, most of the time than the races. So like these yeah. like six, five, four weeks before a big event pops up that we meet every day, we have yeah. our ideas, we discuss, there's so many things in common. And uh, at the same time, it's awesome to, to also see the, everyone every now and then personally i mean uh was a bit difficult in the last one and a half years but you know overall it's it's like it's a hobby so we we do it because we want to enjoy it and that's why we care so much for uh, uh well like a, a very good climate team climate uh, uh very good relations also on a personal basis and and i really think that that this is kind of what makes us as consistent and strong also as a, as a team and our structures and um, yeah. well, yeah. So, and over the years, we, we, we're very happy that we, that we could integrate some, some super talented, super nice young drivers. Um, like where we also feel like this is like, part of it is also educational in the sense that, that, you know, like they are new to the sport, to the whole scene. We also have to kind of show them around in a, in a, in a more mature and, you know, like decent, uh, realistic way. There is many dreams. There is many stories in, in this whole world. And it's very important from, from our perspective um, to kind of supervise them to, to, to learn how everything works, but at the same time also how to enjoy everything and to work on perspectives. And another side of our team, which I want to mention is, that um, we, we, we really built some super interesting uh, partnerships into the real life scene in the past years. Um, mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think like four people from our team are full-time living from sim racing, uh, sim racing related um, work. Um, that's mainly really? in coaching uh, and in uh, like this lounge, um, kind of business where where you I, I i mean i've seen it's it's there, there's many countries where where you have like these sim racing lounges i don't know how how famous it is over over there yeah now. like you go and they've got a few like rigs set up and you can kind of like yeah there's like sometimes there's a bar and sometimes it's just like there's some sofas and stuff but like you just kind of like it's a hangout thing with some sim rigs set up exactly exactly yeah so yeah, like yeah. uh over here in zurich where i am there is a company it's called racing fuel simulators and um, I came together with them like five years ago. And basically we develop simulators, high-end simulators. Um, and these simulators are also uh, bought or there's like some kind of a franchise concept where, where you can kind of buy a couple of these simulators and, and open up your own lounge and you get like the full support and can do like these, well, like community events, like, uh, I don't know, Christmas party with a company. You can just rent out this place and do some fun races, basically virtual go-karting. So, yeah. and, and these things really pop up and, and there's a couple of guys working and, and, and yeah, I, I just enjoy to see how much sim racing kind of grows also into the, the eye side of everyone in the real world so th this is really amazing because i've always believed in in kind of the synergies and, and and potential that that can grow out of sim racing and what we do because it's 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 a super amazing esport yeah it really is and that's like i think like what you said it's it's been popping up more and more and i think people are kind of becoming more aware that it's out there and just like esports in general but especially seemingly since the pandemic started the first summer uh when a lot of the pros got into it when everything kind of just came to a halt it, it exploded and since then it's just everywhere and you know you have all these different type of expos that are around i think more so in europe probably than here like it's not really too big a thing yet uh but you know even uh even here in toronto you know dan morad uh does a lot of stuff online now uh in, in, he was a pro he races in, in imza 
and uh, you know started up a lot of sim stuff too. And like you know how now he has a he's a go kart thing at Mo Sport, uh, and I think the two kind of tie together, especially with his brand. So you know more and more it is like there's a lot of crossing going on, and people are really becoming aware of it in general, which is awesome. I agree. Uh, and good, you know, good for for everything that you're talking about with with RSO and that brand and just everybody else in general. And it's interesting too, just like what you're saying too about you know younger guys coming up and and having to give them perspective because they're it's crazy now. Just like you know, sometimes you'll be in a race or you you see you're watching a broadcast and then there's you know kids like not to be uh, disrespectful to them or anything, but like you know there's kids that are just they're they're killing it. They're fast. They're so good and just you know further down the road, like five ten years, how much does that turn into uh, you know, people getting seats in real cars because we're already seeing that to some degree, right? So it's all super, super cool. One hundred percent. I mean, uh, we've we've been doing the twenty four hours of Daytona this year, January, um, with the help of Moritz Lerner, and uh, now mm-hmm. this guy got himself a seat in uh, in the support series of the uh, German Touring Car Championship. So it's crazy. It's, it's just amazing to see these kind of developments. Also Lauren Heinrich, um, who, who, who just won this weekend in the Porsche Super Cup. Um, mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, clearly Lauren came from motorsport and then at some point, I mean, from my perspective, money ran out and then he had to pause for a year or something. But through the sim racing and his, his kind of presence, he was able to come back to, to, to his dream. And, you know, like these kind of stories are really maybe also changing the game because I mean, one clear benefit of, of this sport also is it's, it's, I would say one of the few esports where you can kind of transfer your skills to the real world, mostly one-to-one to build on your physical yep. cap- capacities or capabilities. I mean, that's what everyone can do. That's just discipline. So you go to the gym, you build up some muscles so you can hold your head right. But if you have the talent, if you have the mental capacity to stand in like tough or, or thrilling situations and, and really go for everything. If you able to put together a, a qualifying lap, I mean, that's really something you can discover 100% in sim racing. So it, it really changes kind of the scouting thing. And this is also a development which we see here in Switzerland where we, um, with these lounges working very closely with uh, some of the real world athletes. So for example, like two years ago, Nico Müller, who's one of the most fav- famous Swiss uh, racing drivers, um, he, he was spending the whole winter, every day, two hours in the simulator, in our sim center, just to practice qualifying laps. It Crazy. was mad. Really, <laughs> it was one of the most amazing things to see because, I don't know, he, 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 he was really just like, I don't know, like quali lap, two laps, pause, quali lap, two laps, pause. And then like doing this for one or two hours. And yeah. the season afterwards, he 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 managed like i don't know the number but he managed a couple of pole positions he really was the the biggest attender he he ended up second in championship so i don't know if this only comes from the practice that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is that it's uh that it's so transferable that it's that it's kind of a no go for the future race driver in the real world to ignore the simulation to ignore the simulators and the, the, the racing itself for preparing them for learning because the numbers, I don't know how many laps yep. I did in my life on the Nürburgring Notch Live. <laughs> yeah. 15, 20,000. How many yeah. people are there in real world who did this? Yeah, um, it's true. Yeah. And just like the ability to kind of get in and race against other people and take these different lines that you wouldn't necessarily think of, you know, I think I remember. Lando Norris uh, doing that maybe early this year, early last year or something. Uh, just you could see that he was taking a line that was unusual, but that, you know, he had mentioned or somebody mentioned that it looked like he got from the sim, which is yeah. very cool. Another cool thing. One of my most fam- uh, favorite uh, examples here is uh, Max Verstappen uh, mm-hmm. practicing this outside Blanchiment overtake uh, in the, in the formula one cars, um, back in his first year when he was racing for Toro Rosso. And he, he was practicing this with the red line guys, um, with, uh, I don't know, I think freak, I don't know. So anyway, so he was practicing this and like a week later he was doing this, this overtake 
on the outside and like every everybody in the formula one broadcast was like oh my god that's crazy how can you stick to this line and i was sitting there like oh, i've seen this guy doing it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's sick yeah. so crazy yeah and it's cool to see them just like doing regular official like crazy like just events where you have the iRacing official special events and you've got like all these pros in it and it's like we're sharing a group of pros like that's that's cool you know what i mean i i admit i admit being into racing for 35 years now um it's it's just incredible to to be able to say like okay yeah i've been racing with lando since he's what like 13 14 uh i've yeah. overtaken and won a race with fernando alonso i battling rubens barrichello so i mean obviously that's that's just that's just also one part of the fascination for those of us who are not aiming to become a real road racer, but still admit to, to love the sport. And the sport is the yeah, exact same love thing. Motorsport. Yeah, exactly. Which like, I think that'll, that'll be one of my highlights forever in sim racing was, uh, when Fernando did not leave the space for me, uh, <laughs> outside of Parabolica once, <laughs> totally pushed me out. So that's, that's something I will never look down. That was fantastic. I was, I was kind of stoked with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And it's like, I'm, I'm definitely personally stoked to see where it keeps going. Um, where do you guys think you're going to go in the future? Like, how do you see things going? Well, you know, it's a difficult question because, um, I mean, as a scientist, um, like one of the yeah biggest challenges is dealing with uncertainty and future is uncertainty. So um, you, you cannot really plan. So what I always say in my team is um, I, I want to stay flexible and dynamic and adapt fast to changing situations. Um, to always um, work on a very trustful and kind of um, uh, belief-based um, uh, yeah, base, for example, with our partners. So we kind of have to believe in the same goals. Um, for example, when we met Richard from SimLab, um, it was like five years ago, I, I, I just ordered my rig there because it was kind of what popped up on Google. And I was kind of texting with this guy and you know, we, we discussed a little bit and I was like asking like, okay, well, like, what are you doing? I don't know. He was selling like 200 rigs that year, working with his wife in a garage. Five years later, this guy moved like eight times, has like more than what, 30 uh, employees. And, and, you know, like it's, it's just crazy. But at the same time, it's very amazing to work with these kind of guys, which are same mind like kind of following ideas, believing in the, in, in this sport. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe we've got the, the opportunity to also discuss a little bit about uh, David and Sasha from TFR lab, uh, lab a little bit mm -hmm. later, um, mm -hmm. because that's one of our newest partners. And, and that's also a very good example for why we, and, and how we build up our partnerships, because I, I think for us, the most important thing is to, to stay motivated, to kind of believe in what we do, to enjoy turning on the computer, and so at the same time, we are very clear about why we are good as we are. And that is also to a big part because of the, the, the hard and very efficient work we do beside the track. And so we also want to keep that running. And personally, I believe that if we kind of do that, have partners which are like more like friends and work on the same visions, um, having a team that is kind of enjoying what we do and at the same time having kind of new ideas developing tools building on partnerships which which give us certain um advantages that is kind of a a, a a super nice foundation to to kind of be prepared to be flexible whatever future holds so that mm -hmm. that is what i would kind of describe our future to 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 be or like at least like you know like these three parts we can influence that but we cannot influence yeah. what happening around so. yeah i i know what you mean man i totally kind of take the same approach in general to things it's kind of you, you work to do like what you're doing right now well um and that's going to kind of shape what's coming but you know it's like trying to predict or, or create expectations is always a tough thing and like you know it can end up kind of leading to disappointment or closing your your eyes to opportunities that come around because you're 
you know, you're, you're not focusing on, you know, what's happening in front of you type thing, you know? Sure. Um, but, you know, for, for the seasons coming up, how are you guys feeling about that? Well, um, first of all, uh, we doubled our effort. <laughs> so uh, we have a second car now uh, fielded up. So yep. last year was our debut season and uh, we lined up in an LMP2 car, Dallara. And um, this year we also have another entry. So we also are lining up with that Dallara again, but we also have a GT car, um, which will be a Porsche. Uh, and that is also a nice story because um, uh, what I like also mean by building up kind of partnerships is also having a, a very close and, and open and transparent and, and, and friendly exchange with all the teams around us. So we're doing the same thing. So I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at anyone. So we can discuss certain situations, but I mean, there's no, no big deal in, in kind of having too strong emotions. So I think that way we ended up having very good relationships with other teams too. And one of them is V Rick Casey Racing. That's basically the team of Keith Camilleri. And um, he has a, kind of a small team. I think that they're like five people, but they also have this nice partnership with VRIC, who's uh, kind of also a, a developer of uh, sim racing hardware of cockpits, um, I think is UK based. And they are like uh, four or five people, as I said. And so it makes it very difficult for them to, for example, enter a car for the full season because most of the time they cannot make sure that there's enough people. So. Um, yeah. we asked them what if we can do that together. And so we ended up, uh, having an entry of five drivers, three of Casey and two of Arso. And, nice. uh, so that, that is, that is a very nice story and also very competitive entry. So I'm, I'm very curious how this goes and, um, guys are looking forward. Um, like the LMP2 team, uh, in our team yeah. is kind of, uh, trying to, to, uh, also kind of, um, teach them a little bit from our experiences last year because there's many things to learn and um, oh, yeah anybody that's coming in that's new there's so much stuff they've so, got to use yeah it's yeah, great yeah so what's the expectations um to be fair it's still the debut season for our gte entry so even though they're experienced uh, gt drivers and i really um have a high uh, opinion about them um, I, I would not really call out any expectation now. So, so they, they should just enjoy it, maybe have like their highlight races, but also I'm sure yeah. that at one or other point they, they will have to learn like yeah. how difficult it is to, for example, have, have the overview, keep the overview in safety car. So, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, good, sometimes and you just like <laughs> settle in, like figure things out. And like yeah. after a couple of races, most people kind of pick it up, uh, but it's definitely like a big adjustment for sure. Yeah, true. But then, you know, like uh, there's so many other teams and obviously we're also there learning. And for example, what I liked, um, because I, I just love the idea. So Alpine uh, Geodesic at, at one point last season, I, I think I found out that they, they must have had someone who was kind of spotting the whole track to have an eye on where there's situations which could cause a safety car. Because at some point in the season, they really got some super magic calls. They yeah, they, they nailed. just entered pit and like, I don't know, like they, yeah. they had so many incredible races coming back from strategy. So yeah. I, I really appreciate that. So if someone of Alpine Geodesic <laughs> is listening, so pff, shout yeah. out, amazing strategy. Um, we're here to learn Mid-Ohio this year. <laughs> Mid-Ohio, yeah, well, like, Mid coming back from what, like, three, like, like three laps uh, back or what? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was nuts. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we'll see some of that again this year. They've got a few entries too, so, you know, they're going to be, they're always competitive. So, you know, battles with you guys, at least, that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, and you guys are teaming up as well with uh, Five Star for GT Sprint, I think, right? Exactly. For so, yeah, America. I mean, that's that's coming up later. But, um, yeah, I yeah. mean, that's also a, a huge compliment to to you and, and the whole team behind, behind Ivra because, um, I mean, it was our first season last year. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, we enjoyed it so much and, and like everyone racing the LMP2, like we were so like kind of euphoric after these races about like how everything works and, you know, like, like all these interaction chat, the safety car, the whole communication, the community, the, the whole atmosphere be between the teams is, is not, is not toxic, you know, like even yeah. if there is like 
stupid situation, someone really, I don't know, got kicked off the, the racetrack or something, there is kind of discussion. At some point, people accept and they, they apologize. It's, it's really cool, very mature um, uh, atmosphere. And that's really what we enjoy. And as I said, so this is one part of what we build on to really enjoy what we do. And, and if there's other people who are that dedicated and, and, and loving the sport, like, like you guys are at Ivra and, and all the other teams around us. So that's just an awesome place to be. And so the sprint series, I mean, it's our first season. Um, so see what we can do. Um, yeah. And uh, there also we're fielding with two cars and the one is uh, going to be a collaboration with Five Star. And mm -hmm. um, so this is like, you know, like it's just like we want to do this, but we cannot make sure to be there at any date, uh, at all the dates. So we we kind of ask around like who would like to join and very yeah. happy we find people who want to race with us <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice nice yeah that should be fun too i mean thanks for the compliment too i'm sure all the other guys and, and girls as part of the team are gonna be happy to hear it and uh I, you know it's something that that that's something that we kind of seek for it's just it's a place where people can go to just you know hang out in a good way not not deal with the the crap that like you just is in so many other places, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's good to hear that you're enjoying it for that and, uh, you know, have more teams in it now. And the sprint, the sprint, I think like, I think this, uh, the season is going to be a little crazy. It's a crazy schedule and with prizes now too, you know, more people in it. So we'll see what happens. Um, I, I mean, the, the whole concept is nuts. I, I'm like, really like, I will be a spectator and maybe the one race or the other, I, I will be helping a little bit on, on, on strategy or preparation, but like, that's, that's it. But like, I don't know, obviously when I went through, through the whole regulations and, and how everything works, it's, that's really amazing. I mean, this is going to be super close races and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, lot, there's a lot to it and we have our we have to do our bop uh in the next couple of days now with this new build which is it sounds like it's a huge i mean it is a huge build like we've got the the new cup car coming which is gonna be sick minor changes <laughs> minor, minor changes yeah to like all the gt3s apparently the gt4s are gonna be much different too so yeah we've we've got our work cut out for us over the next few days that for that's for sure but uh as part of that we have tfr labs helping us out um for that which we kind of uh we looked at a couple different options for bop and uh we you know looked at the data that they had from some work that they did last year from some other series and i think like i think if i remember correctly like across the whole season it was like 0.1 difference between the cars they bop for which is insane like that's all you can really ask for so you know we're pretty optimistic that you know with uh with all the work that that you know they're putting together and scheduling and, and we have testers doing that it'll be just as good for the whole season with us but you guys are always all, also working with them now too so how are they helping you out like what are they offering you guys for like is it race strategy is it is it kind of just telemetry like how do you guys kind of work together for that well i mean first of all um they started raising my attention, obviously, with these um, uh, public little post-race analysis they did last season in Ibra. Um, so it, it was just nice to see after these races. I mean, you, you do the preparation. You have a feeling. You have an expectation. You, you hit it or match it or not. Um, you have the race and everything what happened. And then afterwards, you kind of see the, see the times. And that tells you part of the story, why your race went, how it went. And this is an important fundament for like, like working on the strategy and, and the whole development over the season and, and towards the next race. So um, mm -hmm. I, was, I was chatting with a couple of these guys. So uh, David uh, Berklaw in the beginning uh, mostly and kind of, I don't know, just telling them that I really like what they do. Um, because it helps me understanding my races better, even though I understand it's it's very basic to show some average times, but still it's it's a nice service. It was for free. And then we ended up uh, discussing and meeting and also exchanging about like like all the different, I don't know, ideas in this whole sim racing environment. And I was telling him about many tools that we developed as a team, um, which we're using. Um, kind of behind the scenes, which help us preparing a race, setting up a car, 
um, getting our strategies right in the race. And <laughs> these tools have won us races. And, you know, like there is, they make sense. We're using them for multiple years. They, they just approve, never wrong. So yeah. if they help us, we can improve them further and so on. So we kind of always developing and, and having these ideas. And we also had, for example, a tool which was uh, kind of a, a post analysis tool where you kind of have this like huge Excel sheets where you just copy paste the results and you get some of these data too. So average lab times, you can just see like, like what you prepare. But like as a scientist, as someone who's working with data a lot, I'm always thinking about like how to use the data correct or further or even more, whatever. So I was thinking of new parameters and I was like mainly lacking time to implement these in, in our own tool. And when I discussed with David, I basically learned, okay, they have done all that. And David is a data scientist and Sasha is a, a software engineer, programmer. Mm -hmm. And both of them are now kind of setting up TFR lab. Um, which includes TFR, which is Talk Freak Racing, which is kind of the origin, the team also participating in, in the series. And the lab is kind of the, 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 the laboratory part, but also another nice synonym. So um, yeah. anyway, so they, what they want to do is realizing visions. At the time, they are amazing in super quickly standardized analyzing race data from everything we can get from iRacing. So that gives yeah. us, for example, um, uh, uh, the possibility to observe how different strategies work of, for example, how the, the time differences per lap developed between two teams that both didn't change tires at the stop. So where you can kind of read off which was paying off or not, if someone was shortcutting, if it works or not, if you pit later and stuff like that. You also mm -hmm. can kind of uh, compare to target teams and, and just see like what they do, learn from what they do. Um, we implemented many parameters in the meantime, where we can, for example, um, understand uh, how much time we lose in traffic uh, compared to the others, for example, um, which is super important in endurance races. Um, we also now, I mean, working on new ideas in the future uh, for extending these parameters, um, live data, so basically have that live visualized during the races or um so how sorry to like interrupt there just like with that like what you were just saying so like how like in depth can can you go with them for the like the traffic data like that's pretty interesting the differences of time like in the traffic that you're talking about right like how in depth is that like are you getting differences in stints are you looking at that or is it kind of just like oh, throughout the entire race by lab? We, we, we look at it by lab. I mean, I, I'm not okay. going into detail like how we calculate all that, but yeah, uh, yeah sure, by lab. I mean, uh, we, we're really talking about like understanding also of, of, of different phases of a race. And if I, for example, think of one stint as a phase, uh, mm -hmm. two cars, uh, both cars starting with 100% tire, so fresh tires basically. One car using the tire more in the beginning. Um, being able to to have a small gap like two seconds or something but really hitting the, the tire harder then dropping off in performance like half stint through the other car kind of saving tires because they were in the slipstream in the beginning um and and they kind of be able to uh work out or, or work back into the back of the car and then due to the better tires even being able to overtake and and working on a gap of two seconds clearly you can remember like ah yeah that was when they were faster in the beginning, but then we caught them and we overtook them and, and we just were able to pull the gap. But if you see the data mm -hmm. in detail by lap, and then also compared to, I don't know, changing temperatures, um, changing density of cars, uh, stuff like that. So pff, thousand opportunities. And yeah. you know, like these tools, if you watch a Formula One broadcast and they show the camera to the, to the grants, uh, to, the, to the stands of the team, um, you see all these crazy data, like, like, like animated graphs and like where every car is. And they like, yeah. I don't know, like Mercedes is like calling Hamilton in and just like half a lap later, Verstappen mm -hmm. is called into pits two to cover the strategy. Like, how do they yeah. do that? Why is someone able in the background to calculate 
what the race is going to be like in like 10 laps. So is there rain coming, stuff like that. So <clears throat> thinking of rain. So we need yeah. these tools in the future. There's not a single top team in, call me on that, two years able to win a top split race if they're not using these kind of data. 100%, yeah. It's, it's really cool to see how much that's kind of like progressed over the past, I guess, few years. Uh, I remember like when Casper and I were racing more than we are like now, we don't really have time to race anymore. But when we were, when we were actually on the track, you know, it's stuff that we did, like we kind of just had a simple Excel sheet set up and we'd uh, like when we needed to get really into the nitty gritty, we'd go lap by lap with fuel and just see, you know what I mean? Uh, where we'd get, if we could get where we needed, where the other cars were, but nowhere even close to, to what you're doing with TFR labs now and what some of the other teams are doing. Like, uh, uh, another, I, I mentioned this before in, in the, uh, the VCO um, thing that was up a while ago, but you know Andrew Streetly, the the team engineer for Fiercely Ford, like his setup, he's just a dedicated engineer for the team. Like that's how intense it is now. Like you know that's what these teams have is is you've got to be that into that side of it and not just you know fast on the track, which I think you know comes into play potentially a little more too with with variability like safety cars and all that kind of stuff right versus just a, a sprint race because an endurance race without them is just as a sprint race over and over and over again you know so that's gonna be super interesting to see where it goes and then if we get rain i mean oh baby that's gonna be sweet i'm stoked for it i think i mean safety cars <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a lot <laughs> i mean hopefully hopefully people uh take the time to practice a bit Official races are going to be interesting. And, and, no, and, no, and no spa in Ivra, okay? So. No spa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. We'll uh, have it delayed for quite a while. Teach you guys a bit. <laughs> Maybe 10 minutes will let you know what the forecast in 20 minutes will be. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that was oh, Yeah, but very super, super stoked for that. Hopefully, maybe by the end of the year we'll get it. It seems like that was kind of on the radar. Yeah, fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, but... Yeah, that'll be just another. And then you know, you talk about the data stuff. Like, if if somebody builds in some type of like live radar type app to that, where it's like somehow you can like, I don't even know if that would be a thing, but just you know, it'd be interesting to see how they do it. Like, if it's just totally random, or if you can kind of like add it into the sim as different parts of like you know, at this time, set rain type thing. You know what I mean? That would be no, interesting. I, I I think I mean as as far as. I understand like all the different tech blocks uh, they, they put online every now and then and describe a little bit like how they simulate things and what they set up. I mean, iRacing's clear advantage also in, in this whole discussion about like which sim is the best. I mean, this is this shouldn't be in discussion because iRacing yeah. is just basically the, the best models. It's like every part of this game has its own model. And so I really expect Rain to be modeled. And then I really think that they also use some some forecast forecast or like average weather scenarios or something to kind of predict what's happening maybe implement okay. a random factor or something so let, that's really what i expect so yeah it sounds like the modeling for it too is not just from some basic things i've heard about it so yeah super super stoked to see what happened and then how it's going to play out for us in the long run <laughs> but you uh, know, like to 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 just close that i i really think and that's what i want to highlight like like ideas and people um like now David and Sasha with TFR Lab, like this is this is what really changes the whole game because you know like like these guys are so talented and and I believe in their ideas and I'm I'm really glad and and super happy that we that we can work with them and and really also get so many impressions and and understanding also on how everything works. So you're talking about the BOP. Um, we were, I, I think I can say that because anyway, I want to blog about it at, at some point, but like the, the most exciting project I've done in sim racing, um, I, I think I can say that is really the, the BOP testing we did prior to the spa 24 hours this year, because, um, yeah. we, we gathered together 30 drivers of both teams, talk freak and wrench board online to test all eight GT3 cars. Um, we managed to do like. I, I forgot the numbers. I think 8,000 test kilometers in two days. And That's the, that data is crazy because we were able to vary the weather conditions to get the data on different tires over the stint mm -hmm. on one lap and so on. 
Um, basically, we did this to decide for a car and also because we wanted to kind of test the whole procedure and, and kind of how to set up a BOP testing. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, ultimately, and that was really amazing, that the iRacing BOP is so good. We ended up having five cars within like, what was it? Like, like one tenth, I think. One ten mm -hmm. on Spa, yeah. which is kind of a two minute lap. And uh, I mean, clearly the Ford was dropping out, uh, maybe a little bit the McLaren, but also this car, you, I mean, if you really dedicate and, and spend some time into the setup of the car, I believe that you could kind of rebuild the advantage and kind of gain some things with fuel saving and stuff like that. And, you know, like doing this is first of all, lots of fun because you do, you, you do experience so, so many new I don't know, ideas, you, you have all these great chats and time to, to spend with all the different people from also other teams. That's amazing. And ultimately, yeah. you, you end up understanding the whole game better and kind of choosing the BMW and being super, super, super confident it's the best car and ending yeah. up in top split and seeing BMW is the best car. <laughs> that's amazing. That's awesome. That's yeah, just amazing. That's sick. And, you yeah. know, that's, that's how right this way is. And so I'm very curious and, and, and super happy and looking forward to, to the, the whole partnership and, and development to come in the future. And I hope at one point that TFR Lab is going to be a partner of many, 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 many teams um, because it really yeah. helps or can help if you understand it, but can help <laughs> uh, to, to, to improve the game. Yeah. I think, I mean, they're, they're definitely getting their name out there and, and doing some good work. So I think, you know, only a matter of time type thing. And, you know, excited to see how our BOP goes and all of that that we have to do tomorrow. So fingers crossed there's going to be no hot fix on, uh, on Friday or something that kind of like sets us back into an entire new session. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And then, yeah, we're straight into the first race of the season, Nürburgring. Uh, how's practice been going? You guys feeling pretty good? Well, um, I, I wasn't finishing to say what's the expectation for our LMP2 entry. And um, well, I mean, we ended up second last year. Uh, there were seven races. We won two of them. We had like three poles and four podiums. And um, that's, a, that's amazing, uh, given the fact that the car was new. Um, the, the level was super high. We had so, so strong and competitive uh, um, opponents and other teams racing with us. Mm -hmm. So it was really crazy. And this year, I think competition really stepped up. And this is a, 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 a huge compliment also to, to you as a series and also uh, to everything we, like we as a whole community, like all the teams were able to show through the broadcast and the racing last year. Because I, I, I really mm -hmm. interpret it like that. There's like teams like Impulse um, uh, or um, uh, Simsa who, who, who joined the, the series now who have super strong lineups and, and, and well-known uh, drivers. Some of them also very strong on the LMP2. So really no newbies, even though if it's their rookie season. So I think like while last year there was mainly like four or five teams which, which fought for the championship ultimately, I, I think this year it could be like 10. So yeah. what, what we focus on now for Nürburgring is um, clearly to, to, to have a car which is fast um, in the sense of we, we want to be able to match the same strategy we had or a pace we had in the, in, in the second half of last season where we basically dominated the pace and, and had all mm -hmm. of the, the race victories. So um, but at the same time, we want to improve on the strategy side because that's where we also paid many, uh, um, or we, where we had to learn many lessons last year. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, you know, there's so many things happening. So like when we go into a race, so there is a driver, but there's at the same time, two people in the radio. So the one looking at the strategy, the one more like the spotter part. Yep. And, you know, like if there's safety car call out, there's like so many things going on in your head, like, and as a driver and yep. like people talk to you like two different layers. And then some driver also talks to you, like someone's doing something. And then it's really like Kimi Räikkönen <laughs> moment. Like, don't talk to me. I know what I do. <laughs> but at the same time, I have to admit like, okay, can you please help me like with the safety car procedure now? <laughs> so it's like really so many things. And um, so what we, 
what we introduce now for this season is um, to have a, a, a pre and post briefing of, of the races. I mean, anyway, we're doing this, but we want to really do this in terms of strategy to really think through different scenarios to be better prepared on that on that part. And also mm -hmm. we really want to focus on, on what we can kind of do or change. And that is the car and setup and how much we practice. And so personally, I just love that car. It's, I know I, I mean, I'm not such a good driver, but uh, with that car, I'm really on quite a good level. And I know that, and that also is kind of why I really want to enjoy the full season. So I'm only going to race that car until yeah. uh, the last race of the season. So, um, uh, well, you know, like this is, I, I know that this is also changing something if you just specialize and like focus on one thing, uh, iRacing is, is paying back for that. That's, that's a true fact. So the more time you put in, um, yeah. the better you are. And on the yeah. technical side, we're racing with this car now for a year. So I really think that we understand the car fully. Um, still, I'm, I'm super surprised that seemingly we are the only team going for a completely different approach and set up in the car. But I take that. How so? Um, well, uh, that's, that's... I mean, with no secrets, no secrets here. I'd like to give that's, away or anything. That's part but... of the, that's part <laughs> of the <laughs> secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I think I'm not telling a secret to, to, to everyone who's kind of um, also looking at these details and trying to also learn from what the other teams do. Um, yeah. but I mean, clearly we are working with a completely different approach than, uh, yeah, all the other top teams. And that's also very interesting to see in the races, like how the different cars do perform over the course yeah. of the race and, and under different track conditions and stuff like that. So we also try to involve that more this season. So all in all, more, more structure in our preparations and, and how we do the races. Um, more focus on the car um, mm -hmm. and then we will see where it goes. But um, I know that if we ended up second last year and it was quite close and so Imola. <laughs> um, no, I was just going so, um, <laughs> to say something about Imola with the, with the setup combination, but I, I decided maybe not so, to. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, see where it ends, but um, yeah. clearly, clearly we want to improve from last season. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and it really was close last year. I think, uh, in all fairness, Delta got uh, Delta Sport did get a little lucky in the final one because when we had the second restart, yeah. it was like everybody was driving on ice and the tires were cold and everybody's going off. And they got hit um, fairly hard but came away unscathed and yeah. just luckily were able to continue no problem. Otherwise, you know, who knows what would have happened there. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, given last year, definitely look to see you guys in contention again, which is going to be exciting. Um, and, you know, with the new season, a lot of changes coming up. Are there some that you're looking forward to compared to last year um, or that you're kind of like, oh, not too sure yet? What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, obviously there's there is one change which really got our attention. Uh, and, and that is kind of the 1000 kilometers race length uh and seven hour maximum race time so if if mm -hmm. there's so many safety cars that we kind of extend the race so much that we won't hit the 1000 kilometers the race is going to be finished at seven hours so mm -hmm. that is um there is a technical part because we had to reprogram our tools <laughs> to implement that <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem <laughs> um, so to to kind of give us the warning like okay now this is the kind of window where you really have to think about like which part of the strategy yeah. you want to go but um yeah. no no clearly this is this is this is changing uh also kind of uh the strategy in terms of how to plan for the stints um, mm. with the drivers because you kind of cannot do that like okay you do like two hours or two and a half or something thing but but you kind of have to see like how the stints end up because you want to maybe double stint the tires or triple stint them even and yeah. you know like stuff of the uh, or stuff like this is, is getting a little bit more complex um, but overall I really feel like like the, the whole like improvement is is really also catching up on many of the discussions we had last year. So like also from kind of 
from my team perspective, if I see all these all these series as a, as a as an offer for me as a team to 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 race and enjoy the different racing, this is also what what I I love about Ibra because you know like there is so much participation in and in, in feedback loops where you can also in, in in get involved into like how such a series develops and now seeing these changes ultimately in the regulations is really something um which which i love to see and and also you know like it, it keeps you busy and um so yeah. let's 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 see how it pays out in practice yeah. but uh yeah so far nice. i'm really looking forward to it nice yeah there's definitely a ton uh that we had from uh well, both during the season and uh from the postseason survey that we we kind of took and uh, a big handful and implemented into the season uh you know some of them were regulations based so you know scrapping the kind of like limit on the amount of drivers that can be on a team uh or moving within a team to a different team during the year that kind of uh didn't play well for a couple teams last year but you know sometimes you're into it already and you can't make the change because it's already affected other teams despite realizing you know this isn't the best idea but you can't change it quite yet mm -hmm. um uh but yeah i think just like you said it's important to to listen to what the community is saying, to listen to, you know, the the athletes, the drivers, the, the, the engineers, like, you know, they're the ones that are that are uh, that are out there competing and can give you that kind of like, you know, quote unquote frontline exposure and feedback um, that we can't get because we're not on the grid anymore. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's it's people that are kind of emotionally reacting to things and it didn't work out their way. So, you know, change this because because it sucks for me, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, sometimes it, it is a, a legit complaint and then, and then sometimes it's, you hear it often enough. So you have to look into it a bit further. So, you know, definitely a handful of changes coming into the season. Uh, and a couple of those, what do you think is going to be uh, the most challenging, I guess, in terms of the circus that we've got, uh, like, what do you think will be the toughest race? And with this big GT3 field now compared to what we had last year, like, how do you see that kind of playing out? What do you think is going to be the toughest for you guys? Yeah, you know, like obviously traffic management, that's also what we discussed, is going to be a bit different from last year because um, we we got, first of all, we got like the slower GT3 and then mm -hmm. we, we got multiple of them. <laughs> so, and, uh, <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, like the GT3 cars, it's like from an LMP2 perspective, it's sometimes easier to to overtake them. But I, I expect that especially these situations become more complex where the GTEs are lapping the GT3s while the LMPs are coming. So mm -hmm. like, these kind of situations, they require patience and stuff like that. But you know, like this is not such a big deal for, for me personally and, and for us as a team dealing with traffic because um, like, it's like anyway, you, you win some, lose some, uh, ultimately it's, it's really, I don't know, equaling out so we we don't want to force something where you don't see see a gap or where you cannot go through or whatever so we yeah we're trying to be not so aggressive still it happens sometimes that you get kind of caught up in, in crazy situations or something but you know like ultimately um you i mean that's that's a deal i mean it's six thousand kilometers over the whole season so you you have to avoid these these races where you where you just have like these kind of drop weeks so last year we got like two of them we got barber and spa um mm. in, in seven races still managed to get second i mean i'm, I'm not saying imola uh -huh, uh -huh, without being critical yeah. with our own performance so i mean obviously we also binned it sometimes but i think that was also characteristic last year for the whole battle for the championship because i think all the teams alpine pure sims delta arzo they all got their kind of bad races where we lost ground yeah. or something. So, yep. and, and, you know, like in theory, obviously, so if you avoid these, you're going to become champion. So mm -hmm. if we can decrease from last season in a first step, that would already be awesome. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, then the tracks, yeah, they, they're like very different from last year. Um, so all new tracks. And that's also one, one nice thing about Ivra that, that you come up with like most of the time kind of untypical tracks, which are not being raced so often. I mean, there's kind of exclusions or whatever, but anyway, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's a very interesting 
calendar. I mean, personally, I'm looking forward to Watkins Glen, which is uh, a, a track <clears> I, I just love to drive because it's so fluid. Still, it's super difficult to overtake over there. Um, yeah. Nürburgring is now our season opener. So um, obviously, when I go for the Nordsch Life, I most of the time also have the Grand Prix circuit. So I've raced it also a couple of times. Lots of laps, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like this one is going to be uh, difficult in class because it's super difficult to overtake. I think that's what yeah, we can very narrow in some places. Yeah. Lots of uh, slower turns where like your your difference in speed is not going to be that high. Exactly, short it short straights and and stuff like yeah. that. And then what else we got like Barcelona? Well, it's a test track. It's, so it's kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a yeah. it's okay. So let's do Barcelona. So from yeah. my personal perspective, um, what about Red Bull Ring? Red Bull Ring. Oh, I think that's going to be intense. Yeah. Red Bull Ring is going to be intense. Um, but yeah. uh, I can break, so I, I think it's going to be a track which suits me, but I have to buy it, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on it at all yet. No, not on iRacing. Oh, so. and... <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's like what, uh, like six corners or like eight, ten. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's true. But I mean, I'll still say, it's, yeah, still it's and, and I thought it is. Yeah. And I like I I kind of looked at it, you know, you watch races and, and I hadn't tried it anything else and then got it when it came out. And I was like, oh, my God, this is this is so much more difficult and, <laughs> and, and, and actually great Grand Prix circuit than I thought. Like it's it's challenging. Uh, because of all the elevation also in the corners you really have to everywhere and like have yeah. to control the car very much on throttle especially also yeah. yeah 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 it's it's a great track and again like there's a lot of tight sections where there's not too too much room for passing and then you know getting into some of those corners everybody thinks they can go outside and what is it turn four <laughs> you know you see like guys in f1 trying it doesn't really work that often everybody's trying it doesn't really work we'll definitely see that happen in the race too as so long as, <laughs> as long as race control of Ivra is not handing out for penalties like the one norris got i'm i'm oh, totally fine with it so yeah 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 <laughs> well we'll see um but yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to the season it should be a good one what um, are you looking for especially with the new rules. So what do you expect from like your organizers or race control perspective? Hmm. I think uh, I, we're changing a couple things up. And I think like, you know, one of those is uh, for me, I won't be as active in race control on race days. I'm going to try to shift more to, to this kind of stuff so that, you know, we've got more media going on in race days um, and leading up into race days. Because, you know, this kind of stuff takes a lot of time to, um, I will miss, miss race days because they're a ton of fun, but uh, I think I'll look forward to, to some other parts of it and, and watching it, you know, in all honesty and like truly watching these races back because, you know, it's, it's part of us, you know, creating what we have with Ibra is, you know, going back and kind of like looking at what we're doing, right? And, and part of that is watching the races, watching the broadcast uh in combination to see like you know where like you know how are these guys commenting on it and like uh what what is the race actually because when, we, when we're race control honestly we have no idea what's going on uh it's the entire time is <laughs> legitimately there's like we have no clue what's going on there's got you know, oh my God. a couple people that are monitoring for for anything that's going on in terms of you know accidents and we've got our track maps up and, and our all of our you know, JRT with, with all the positions and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so, you know, if yellow comes up, we get Im immediately switch somebody to that to see what's going on, right? And then basically after the first incident comes in, it's kind of like you have the stewards that are just constantly in there yeah. just reviewing <laughs> stuff. And it's just like between all of that stuff and then safety cars, because then it's like all hands on deck, everybody jumps into one place and we've all got different roles. There's There's like... We don't know what happens, you know, so it's fun to watch back. And the the last race, Motegi last year was crazy. It was crazy. To, I mean, they were all crazy, but like, it just it looked like you guys were legitimate pros. Like, it looked like you were watching a, a broadcast of an actual race, like with the the inner traffic um, management, like how everybody was managing it. Uh, like the ebb and flow of kind of like the the interclass stuff that you're talking about, how there is that ebb and flow, right? Like, you know, sometimes it's a faster car. You've got to realize that, yeah, you really want to get by this guy in this corner, but big picture, 
take them on the outside, you're going to like the other car that you're losing that like three tenths to is going to get the same ebb when he gets to the guy in front of him. Right. Um, so yeah, watching it back, super, super cool. So I'll be, I'll be looking forward to watching those back. Um, but I think, uh, I'm excited the most. I think that the, uh, the fall season of the, the GT schedule is going to be super exciting. The, the tracks are all super, super demanding. A lot of them are really narrow, really tight. Um, and we had to, we changed the schedule around a little bit because, uh, I think I think originally we were starting with Montreal and we were like, no, that's that's not a good idea, guys. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> let's change this up and let's get like you know a track that that offers a little more uh, like you know push and pull room type thing to get people out on track together first because we've got a lot of new teams out there, so that'll be good. And you know, there's more uh, races in that now and more races in um, uh, the Club Cup, which is just a riot. That's always just fun, like super fun again to watch back. Uh, so yeah, I think that, and, and on like, partnering up with VCO is a big thing for us, uh, excited to see kind of how that develops. Um, you know, we've only been together now for a few weeks, but it's been great so far. Uh, and you know, they're gonna, they're gonna broadcast the races through their stuff, which is great. Um, and you know, sometimes look at the photographers on stuff, which is awesome too. Um, yeah, it's great, man. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, I think just kind of like continue to build on, on, on this kind of like the track that we're on right now, you know, we spent a lot of time over the summer and we kind of do this always like, and again, this is the, you know, like you, the scientist side, you know, Casper, Richard and I are all, uh, you know, we all have our undergrads in, in some type of like science or engineering, um, and so we approach things like that and, you know, sit back, analyze things like, you know, what went right, what went wrong. If, if it's wrong, is it something we can control? Then, okay, what do we do for it? Uh, and, you know, put all that together into the new regs and the new season. So, yeah, now it's kind of like the fun, quote unquote, <laughs> of the season, which is really just, it's it's mayhem. It's so much. Literally, I think like almost, almost every weekend we've got stuff going on. So uh but it's fun like it, it it's 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 super exciting when you get to a new season i mean like uh driving in and race control you know for you guys like you get it's it's like you know being in on a sport team you know like we i played tons of sports growing up and like at the beginning of the season you just you get like that like tingly like okay let's go like we're here now you know um and it's it's still like that you know for the race control side of things too so you know we're all excited for it to get going and to see how you guys are going to do like you know we're not racing anymore but like we're still like you know drivers at heart and you know we love seeing people compete out there and just you know doing what they can do so yeah looking forward to it and i think like you said earlier uh the competition is going to be very difficult this year um in in really all the series but notably in, in endurance there's there's a lot of new faces the first time that we've had the, a grid where there's no sister cars in the same class, um, oh, I did, which is I did yeah, check for that first, one. Oh, wow. okay. that's first time that's happened. Yeah, so okay. the uh, the selection protest was tough, like getting the grid set up as we as we led up to that announcement. That was uh, it was it was tough, and and it was so tough we had to add that excuse me that 49 at the car um, to the grid kind of in the last minute there. So yeah, I think overall like. I think Red Bull Ring for endurance and uh, the fall season are like big standouts for me. Uh, and then Club Cup is, is always just a ton of fun. And Club Sports, like the the steady, like it's always there and it's always going to be good. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's great. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. That's that's amazing. So, and, and like everyone out there watching this or listening to that, I don't know, but like not <laughs> very familiar with sim racing. That's like how the whole sport separates from from other disciplines in my view too so there's like so many dedicated and and euphoric and 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 like also inspiring people around so and, and it's just it's just that's the fun part of of jumping into the seat after you had like a difficult day at work or like a busy day at work or whatever so you you go into the seat you meet with your friends you know 
that you are preparing for a series like like the endurance series now and and meeting with other teams who have the same dedication who put in the same amount of work the maybe other ideas but you know like the, the same direction and you respect on each other on track you have the great racing but you at the same time play smart because it's the whole season so not like kind of meeting common ground and enjoying that for now maybe a half a year so what's mm -hmm. the point that's just one of the most amazing things i can imagine and that's really like shout out to you guys like but this is also re representative to to everyone who's involved in organizing all this because you know like yeah. most of the time you you guys are not seen so much but i admit and i have to say that 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 we we just appreciate like all all the things you do and that's the reason why we're here and that's also why everyone is so freaking out about the season to start and 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 you know like building up the tension towards the weekend is just also great feeling which kind of leads you through the week yeah. and it's it's just great but it also applies for the broadcast teams and and everyone who's involved in that side and i'm yeah. i'm also super stunned and 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 like in a positive way like impressed uh with the collaboration with bco and i'm super curious and honored also to i mean to 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 be in a series which is which is on that like professionalization level and 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 having that stage kind of also i mean come on let's be serious that's amazing to watch because i'm also watching the broadcast because when i'm racing mm -hmm. i don't understand anything of the race again and so i get lost so even if i don't do the start at the moment i step into the car at the first point i just lose overview about everything was going on so like, like the only thing exactly. that like track that's it yeah yeah so yeah. keep on doing the races on Saturday. So I have the Sunday for rewatching the races. That's that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. We'll we'll keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, but true. And, and the broadcasters, like, we have an awesome team that that they've been with us for a while now, and like, they do they do awesome work. And what you said too, anybody listening, it's just there's a certain like level of of like reward, this feeling of reward that you get when you race a race like that, even if you don't win, the amount of work that you put in. And the, you know the attention to, to detail and the attention to uh, like the craft of of being able to to be on the circuit with other people. You know what I mean? Like uh, you know, for us and you know, granted, it's been a couple of years now since either of us have raced in something like this. But like you know, in our prep, it was like okay, like now we have to do laps side by side the entire lap for like X number of laps to force each other into these positions so that if I'm on the outside here, I know what I can do on the outside, you know? Exactly. Um, and just, you're, you're trying to think of all these details so that when the race comes, like you're prepped for everything possible. And then, you know, you've got your strategy guys that are worrying about those other extraneous things and variables that come up uh, that you can't manage on the track while you're in the car. So super, super rewarding. Uh, I think for everybody that's driving, regardless of how you finish, it's, it's a fun day, that's for sure. I agree, unless it yeah. ends in T1. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just here for sake, ready guys. <laughs> but but like that's that's also like like my 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 personal like fun moment of all these Evra weekends is like wherever you go, like in all the regulations or like uh, drivers briefing or something. There's kind of these these end note, and also in the driver briefings, like people always think of like everyone here we want to enjoy this kind of reminder <laughs> so this is like <laughs> i'm always like okay yeah, please like everybody listen we've heard we've heard this thousand times but really like and now you just give the answer why this is so important because exactly what you say like it's really so much time and preparation into all of this i mean if you're nervous if you do the bottas in hungary okay but you know, like it still looks stupid and everyone is not really happy with what you did and you want yeah. to start the season like that, or you start to, do you want to start the race like that? No, obviously not. You would, you would like to be in the other situation. No, obviously not. And that's kind of also what we try to um, carry throughout the season. So always kind of think before we act. So it, it's endurance. It's hours and hours. If we cannot make a move at one point, we wait. So yeah, exactly. if you can stay behind a car, your time will come. So if you lose the race, well, you lose the race. If you think you lose the race, Ivra is going to call a safety car. So <laughs> always, always time for winners. And geodesic is, uh, is kind of uh, the best example.
So because I think they they came back twice from 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 being lapped and also who was that was that P and D Racing? Uh, yeah, VIR for uh, geodesic. For, they were lapped down at VIR. They came back and P and D at uh, Phil Island. Island. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. ended up winning the the, the amateur <laughs> class after being Same. lapped or something and and ending up on yeah. the roof. On the roof, on the roof, take it. I mean, like, just ask Samuel and Arjun about that, but <laughs> on the on the, <laughs> on the roof crazy. and, uh, you know, get their pairs done and uh, get back out there. And that's the thing is, like, you know, with the, with the safety cars, you're not out of the race, like, yeah. until, like, it's done. You never know what's going to happen. And you can get your laps back. You can get your time back with, uh, again, just strategy, you know, knowing when you can get repairs to come back out in front of the safety car and get back at it again, basically. True. Yeah. True. Yep. So, man, any, uh, this was a great talk. This was great to uh, learn about uh, Manuel and RSO and what you guys got going on for the season uh, and in general. Uh, any last words before we kind of log off here for the day? Yeah, sure. So, um, if I may, and I know where this video is going to be ending up, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe some of our competitors and, and, and the other teams are also watching that. So, um, mm -hmm. I I am really looking forward, and the whole team is to 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 race again against some of the best teams in the world, to race against some of the best drivers in the world. So really looking forward to that. We're super super happy that that so many strong teams, uh, like the mentioned ones, like in pools. Uh, I think Phoenix also uh, Simsa, um, they mm -hmm. they they entered the competition. So looking forward to to race and fight with them. Uh, we're trying to keep it clean and and see what the season. Uh, shows in the end, but but really shout out to everyone. Shout out to Delta. Looking forward to see you on track again and uh, being the toughest challenger for uh, kind of defending your title. So um, still very very much uh, appreciated battle with with uh, Delta also. So um, uh, really really looking forward to that one. And so uh, thank you everyone um, for for watching this for 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 listening. Looking forward to see you on the weekend. And uh, ultimately, thanks to the whole team, to my team, uh, has been a super nice preparation so far in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think we're uh, very, um, yeah, focused, uh, looking forward to the race, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. So uh, see you on Saturday. <laughs> nice, yeah. So th and thanks for joining us as our first one here, uh, and good luck to you. Thank you. And the rest of RSO. Uh, we'll see what happens in the first race and throughout the season. And uh, hopefully for everybody else listening out there, we'll, uh, we'll talk again soon to somebody else uh, and you'll have some more uh, insights to listen to. Yes, I would, good be, one. I would be definitely listening to that one. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. See Thank you guys. You. Bye. <laughs>